Welcome to Behind the Visual, a podcast where I interview people responsible for creating and putting together all the images you see out in your world every single day. I am your host, lifestyle and advertising photographer, Mark Hansen. And today, my guest is Frank Maddox. Frank is the VP of Creative Services at Warner Records. This dude has worked with and designed album covers for Linkin Park. Deftones, Gary Clark Jr., Green Day, Alanis Morissette, Madonna, and many, many more. The guy's a great guy, interesting stories. He tells you a little bit about how the um, Linkin Park Hybrid album came together and some Deftones albums came together, as well as some of the Gary Clark Jr. albums and some other cool stories. So check this one out. I know you're going to love it, and let's go to it. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate you, you know, agreeing to do this podcast. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's cool what you're up to. I went through a bunch of the ones that you have, and I appreciate anybody who's kind of like having these conversations with people. Uh, and, and yours is interesting because you have um, all different facets of, you know, kind of careers and people doing things. So I think that's cool. Yeah, I wanted to mix it up. And pretty much anybody that's kind of has anything to do with mm -hmm. behind the scenes or even in front of the camera a little bit, not as much in front of the camera, but definitely if they have something to do with, you know, making some kind of art or, you know, commercial or advertising or whatever, because there's, I mean, I know there's other, like what you did the, um, what was that podcast you did undercovers or something like yeah. that? Dude, that should, your episode of that should have just been called iconic because <laughs> I have not heard somebody say iconic as many times in one podcast about any one person as I had on that podcast. And as, uh, as the, um, I forget, I think it's Nick is his name as Nick did, or did I say iconic a million times? He did. He did. He <laughs> okay. did. It was constantly yeah. like, Oh yeah, that was an iconic album cover. Yeah. That was iconic. Yeah. And, and he wasn't bullshitting. He was right. I mean, it's not, cool. these are covers that people, I think people actually, you know, remember, you know? And so it's, it, uh, so I was listening to it and I knew a little bit about you. I knew your artwork on Instagram and then I right. knew a little bit about what you did. And then when I was listening to that podcast, I was like, holy hell, damn, this dude's done a ton. So that's cool, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, that was a fun one. And he was yeah. very knowledgeable about all that stuff and passionate about it. So it was, yeah, it was, was kind of a tell. nice back and forth. Yeah, he's, he does his homework, man. I, I enjoy listening to all those about, I know a lot of those guys he's talking to and everything. So it's, it's cool to hear a lot of those stories. And there's a, as you, I don't know if you've listened to any others, but there's a crossover between me and some of those guys on certain projects and everything. So it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to listen to more of them. Yours is the only one I've listened yeah. to so far, but I'm definitely on my list of ones. To, uh, right now I'm in the middle of some book. Um, Chaos, I think it's all about the Manson murders and some okay. dude who investigated it and spent 20 years investigating all the Manson murders. And I haven't gotten into it yet. I heard them on the Joe Rogan podcast and this dude basically, I guess he's saying that Manson and his people didn't necessarily do it or didn't do it for themselves. They maybe did it because they were brainwashed by the CIA or some kind. Of, and he's done all this research. So he's not, everything he does, it all backs up. He said the more he did it, the deeper it got into something else. And it went from being a, maybe like a one year assignment for a magazine into 20 years of, of stuff that he's looked into. Wow. Yes. And the, what was it the, um, the prosecuting D, uh, DA, I guess on the, on the thing, yeah. the prosecutor was completely corrupt. It seems like. So Isn't that Bugliosi or something? No, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 It's Bugliosi. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like completely corrupt. It sounds like. So, um, once that's over, that's on my list to check out more. <laughs> <laughs> check out more of those. But it's yeah. A long it's a good luck with book. that. Sounds like a daunting task on that one. Yeah. It's like a, 16 chapter book or something and wow. i'm like 14 hours on audible yeah okay. so i'm not i'm just listening to it while i'm working in the yard that's right really here. cool yeah exactly yeah so it gives me something to do well, dude tell me how'd cool, you get man. in Can... how'd you get into doing all this and end up where you are because it's not like a, i'm assuming it wasn't one of those things where as a kid you're like hey you know i want to be the vp of creative at warner or at a, at a record agency you know whatever so how'd yeah work out um, well, I was always artistic as a kid, um, in school, art was really one of the only classes that, you know, kind of was of interest to, to me as I got, uh, 
in my latter years. Um, you know, it actually was my art class was kind of like my my the class that saved me at school, which got me through all my other periods was kind of getting to go uh, be with all and the other kids in the art class. classes. I took photography. Yeah, absolutely. You know, GPA any kind of creative out. outlet like that. Yeah. Um, uh, when I went, got out of high school, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, but I knew I wanted to go into the arts. Um, so I uh, had an interview with um, Art Center, College of Design in Pasadena, um, which is a fantastic school. I had known some people that have gone there. Um, and I took my portfolio in, which was pretty shady, and it wasn't really up to, up to speed. And they straight out told me, like, you're not ready for this. Um, so kind of go back and do some more work, kind of focus in these areas, um, and then come back and see us. So I went to San Diego and went to junior college for two years and kind of like got my um, general ed stuff out of the way. And at the same time, took a bunch of art classes and kind of like broadened my portfolio, kind of opened my mind up to other things. Um, at that point, I was just really doing like kind of surf skate uh, influenced kind of like, you know, um, kind of, you know, naive teenager artwork. Um, yeah. So anyway, I was able to build my portfolio up and um, approach them again after two years and they accepted me. So I went to um, Art Center on an illustration major for three years. Um, and uh, that was amazing. I mean, you know, not only the skills that you learn as far as like technical skills um, and being exposed to materials and techniques and everything, but just the kind of mind expansion and opening you up to so many other um, forms of art and art theory and, um, you know, just kind of being in a creative environment like that was, was really amazing. Um, so it was funny. I mean, I went, went for illustration and I took like life drawing and painting and all that stuff for, for three and a half years. Um, got out of school, was working as a working freelance for like two years, started to do um lots of things for um music related uh magazines like ray gun magazine was a big client of mine back in the day ray gun was like this really cool kind of experimental magazine um music related but the art and the photography was always just you know cutting edge and beautiful so was the I music used to do something small you've jobs. been into was that something yeah you were i mean into you know abs absolutely music was um i used to always joke actually like if you looked in my stack of magazines you would think i was a musician because i had like spin and rolling stone and ap and like all these mags but i'm not a musician um yeah. can't even play any type of instrument or anything but always like super interested in you know music and being you know kind of finding underground bands and um i was always the guy introducing my friends to new bands you know uh making mixtapes and kind of just sharing things that way um so music was definitely all then? I did. I was into photography. Yeah. Um, not as heavy as I am now, but yeah. definitely it was like a, another tool. Um, and you know, it was like really like documenting our lifestyle at the time I grew up in Venice. So there was a lot of fun things, you know, whether it was, you know, skating, surfing adventures and, you know, kind of stuff like that. Um, yeah, I took a lot of photography at art center. So like it, it was definitely something that I was interested in and started to kind of put together. Um, and you know, still do, but yeah, it was like all those tools. Um, and I started to do some work for some record labels, Warner brothers being one of them. And, um, I was in the office one day, just kind of cleaning up some things with this art director that I was working with and their head of creative, who was Melanie Nissen, um, kind of took me to, took me aside and was like, would you ever consider having a full-time job here? Cause they were like aware of the work that I was doing and everything. And at that point, you know, I was just like being inside the label was just so cool. The atmosphere was so great. The marriage of music and art was like, you know, what a what an amazing possibility. And I I totally Absolutely. jumped at the chance. I was just like, you know, are you kidding me? <laughs> like that's yeah. amazing. So that was in like 2000, maybe 1999, 2000. Um, I took a role as a like a, you know, I think it was an art director then, but it was basically like a, you know junior, not a junior designer, but a designer type role um, at Warner Brothers Records. That's a pretty sweet gig. Yeah. I have to say, man. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to get into some place, it sounds like you uh, fell into the right place. 
It's awesome, man. I mean, I was aware then of how difficult it was, I think, to get inside type of place like that. Like I was like king of self-promotion. I used to um, look on the back end of CDs and albums and liner notes and take down, you know, all the information about what the label was. And then I would go, you know, it's kind of early days. So there wasn't a lot of internet love um, or yeah. stuff you could find out online. So I'd have to go through like these agency books and find out who's the creative director at Sony you know, and then send them a handmade package that I made. I mean, I made, you know, thousands of self promos that I would send out everywhere. Some people I still talk to art directors have some of those things from, you know, back in the day when I was sending them out. But, you know, I knew that it was hard to get some, not only get somebody to talk to, but actually get into a place to meet with somebody, much less find a job somewhere. So yeah, say how many, how much, that. how many responses did you get sending that stuff out? You know, I would get, you know, again, it wasn't, um, it was hard to get a response because yeah. somebody had to really take the time to call you back. You know, it wasn't just shoot a quick email and say to someone like, oh, your work is cool. Keep in touch. Right. Uh, yeah. It was like the process of, you know, tracking this person down, you know, to find them. And yeah, I would get some calls back and I'd be super stoked. And that would lead to some, you know, some jobs sometimes. Or honestly, I would be the annoying guy calling, following up about my work. You know, I'd be like, I, and I guess maybe I learned this from my dad or something, um, you know, just like self-promotion, you know, sending your work in, calling them back, asking them if they saw it. If they didn't see it, can you send it again? Will you find, you know, just, yeah. I got some, you know, some, some irritated people I would talk to here and there. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen you. I haven't seen what you're talking about. I don't know what's going on, but you know, for every, every five people you get that are not cool, you get one person that is maybe the start of like a really cool relationship. So. Um, a lot of the jobs I got at first were by, were by doing that. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. It was much harder back then. I remember for me too, as well, it was much harder getting people to respond back then than it is now, as far as how quick they can turn. Although now I send out like 50 emails and you're lucky if you get like two responses, but you know, I always dad try to respond to people. My dad was in, um, he had a packaging design firm and he was the president of the, of the firm. So he was on the creative side, but he wasn't actually, he was kind of like overseeing the creative and making the decisions on the aesthetic versus like someone who's plugging away in the computer as a designer. But um, yeah, he was the principal of, of all that. And they did some amazing work throughout the 80s, 90s. And, you know. So were your dad and your mom, were they creative? Obviously your dad was. My mom creative. was creative. <laughs> she was uh, into art, painting and drawing. Um, yeah, it definitely was like not, it wasn't discouraged around my house, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that's good. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I try and do that with my daughters. You know, yeah. they're not, they're not overly artistic for whatever reason, but um, I try and back them in whatever they are, you know, they are into and Me not too. discourage them because I feared I, my dad wanted me to be a lawyer. And if I'd gone done, been a lawyer, I'd be miserable right now. I would be hating life. So. Um, yeah, was, my son is creative in the way that he thinks and uh, isn't like a visually creative. My daughter's yeah. really into into artwork, but I think first and foremost, I think just showing them that creativity is an option is the number one. Like they see me working on the computer on photography and designs and to think that like that's an actual something I could do later in life, like whether it's painting a picture or, you know, taking a photo, that's that's cool i think that's the starting point is showing them that like you can do something you love and make a living no yeah know? i completely agree yeah do you sell any of your artwork not or yet you just do it for you yeah i do it for me i i do it i've just like super passionate about it sometimes i feel like it's the um the anti uh computer like if i'm on the computer all day working on some you know, some designs or a layout or something. It's fun to just go get in the studio and kind of like throw some paint around and, um, you know, rip things up. And it's just kind of definitely like the 180 of like being so refined in the computer. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, eventually I'd like to open it up to making some prints um, and selling some stuff. You know, I just, it's like a daunting task to try to get to that status yeah. right now <laughs> yeah i can see my that. wife is like what are you gonna do with all this stuff because yeah, i mean I'm if like, you're well, basing it on instagram it looks like you're creating multiple things a day i mean it looks like you're constantly tons, man. it's out of control <laughs> it's out of control hey nothing wrong with that 
Where do ideas come a, from for all this stuff? They just pop in your head? Yeah, it, it does. I'm really into, um, I don't, I don't, so the, the stuff with my art, I mean, I don't think you would look at my design work and say that it's refined in any way. You know, I'm always kind of like bringing in, you know, um, some sort of organic element or things are haphazard or the cropping is weird or something is, you know, organic and human about it. But the, the artwork that I'm making is even more so. It's just sometimes very random, sometimes stream of consciousness, sometimes, you know, I have thousands of photos that I print out and I, and, and I use, and sometimes they're laying around and it's about the marrying two images that, you know, were shot a year apart, but somehow they go together. Um, sometimes I turn things over upside down and mix them up and then put them together so that I don't even see what's happening, but it becomes this random composition of things. Um, so I don't know where the ideas come from. <laughs> I think that's what and makes I it interesting know, though. Yeah, I hope so. I ho I don't really know. Sometimes there's no, I uh, don't really understand where it's all coming from. It's, and sometimes when I look at it after, then I become aware of like what the story is. It's, it's really interesting. Like I, even with some of the design work I do, I don't always know um, what the goal is or what the meaning is until, you know, I step back from it and it's maybe weeks or months later and then I go, oh, okay, I kind of get where I was at during that and, and it works with this somehow or, you know. Yeah, I think that's what's, like I said, I think that's what really makes it interesting to look at your stuff is the way you put it all together and the way some, it is haphazard and it's not overly refined and it's, to me, that's what makes it interesting and makes it very cool to look at. Thank um, you, man. Yeah, that's that's the that's the idea. Dude, tell me. Okay, so you work with Lincoln Park, Deftones, Gary Cart Jr., Green Day, God knows a ton of other bands. What is is there one thing among those bands that it seems that they all have in common, or is it because they're all big time bands? They're not most. You know, all those bands are big. So other than the fact that they're at Warner. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that they all have in common, you know, that as far as when they come to you, you know, ideas or they, uh, I don't know, are they very, do they have everything kind of lined up the way they want? Are they very confident in everything as a, each individual band or is it something where they there's something else that makes them all so successful? I think that's like a huge question and it's, yeah. and it's a huge question um, for many reasons you know, I would say the things that they share in common is that they're all very professional, obviously. Um, and they're all willing to embrace creativity and kind of, um, um, willing to, um, work together on things. But if you look at all of those artists, and even if you look at one particular artist, you know, let's take Deftones, for example, I think I've worked, I know, well, I've worked with them since 2000. I've probably done seven albums for them. Um, and every one of those is different, you know? So if right. you start to say like, do they, do they all have the, an idea for what they want on the album? Well, sometimes yes. And sometimes no, you know, with Deftones out of like seven albums, maybe there was two or three where it was discussed, like, this is what we want to do. But there was many other times where there was like, we have no idea what we want. Go and in, go into your crazy land and like make some stuff and then present us with some ideas, you know? So there's varying degrees, you know, um, even within those four artists, you know, a span of 20 years where I've had with like Deftones and Linkin Park, there's so many different yeah. stories related to every album, you know. Does it, do you have a team at this point that kind of helps put it all together or is it still mostly coming from your brain or how's, how's that I working? I think more than ever, it's coming from me. It always was yeah. like, that's something that's just, um, I don't know. It's something that's important to my level of creativity. Like, um, I really am passionate about doing everything. And, you know, it's the way I approach my projects is, is strange, not strange, but it's, it's, um, it's different than other art directors and, and designers, I think, in that I get, I work with an artist sometimes who has n absolutely no idea of what they want. So at that point, it's up to me to kind of like go into an artistic creative space and either bring out some stuff that I'm interested at that's in the time, you know, things I'm working on or photography I want to explore or techniques that I don't really know what the outcome is a lot of the times. Um, 
and that's a very fun space to be in, but it's also very uh, scary spaces sometimes because in the end, I have to produce a product. You know, we have to be able to have an album cover, have a package and be able to sell things. So it's fine to be an artist sometimes and be doing, you know, doing all that stuff. But um, if I, uh, at the end, it, something has to happen, you know, it has to come to fruition. So yeah. um, I think, uh, and there's something that really intrigues me about like, having all of these things to to bring to the table like i love photography and i'm starting to do much more of that for my artists in the last like decade um so you know i i, I sometimes i go like wow there's a project where i shot the, all the photos did all the design did the illustration and did you know the packaging design whatever it is and it's like that's really cool like i feel really proud when the whole vision kind of like started with me and and me and the band whatever you know Oh, I'm sure. Did, so did you do all the Linkin Park albums? It was on all the Linkin Park albums. There was a few that snuck in there that I wasn't so hands-on. Um, the Living Things album, they had worked with like some 3D guys who built some of those 3D wireframe things. Um, yeah. A Thousand Suns, we worked with this amazing illustrator named Josh Vanover, who was like just this madman, kind of maybe similar to me in a way, who just generates all of these crazy pieces. Um, and I was fortunate enough to work with him, but all the other covers I've, I've done, I mean, starting with hybrid theory, um, moving into Meteora. Um, so yeah, it's been a nice, a nice run with those guys and they're super fun to work with. So the hybrid theory, man, where did the wings idea come from? What is this? Like butterfly wings or moth wings? Yeah. Yeah. So dragonfly wings. wings, dragonfly. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's cool it's funny that you bring that up because we're actually kind of like, it's the 20 year anniversary of hybrid theory right now. So we're very aware of like that album and, um, you know, talking about kind of like the, the lineage of, of all that. The, the idea between that behind the, uh, the wings was kind of this marriage of um, kind of this delicate kind of soft image with the, the soldier, which represented like kind of like the harder edged um, side of the music and of, and of the band's philosophy. So, you know, early on, the band what used to be actually called hybrid theory for a minute. Um, so they didn't, when they decided not to have that name, they then said, okay, let's name the album hybrid theory, but let's carry over the same principles, which is like this marriage of kind of like, you know, dark and light, hard and soft, kind of like the, you know, the aggressive and the kind of um, more softer side of things. So in the imaging, you know, we had the soldier, Mike brought in this like soldier drawing. We wanted to approach it from like a graffiti stencil standpoint. So we stenciled it, but it was like, okay, cool. It's, it's a great icon, but like it's missing something. Um, so the juxtaposition of the wings kind of like gave it this yin, yin and yang thing. It was like, and I almost wanted the wings to look like it was painted on the wall after or previous to the stencil of the soldier being put on. So it's kind of like this, you know, push and pull of ideas. Yeah, I thought it was a great, especially with the the album being called Hybrid Theory and to have that on there. I thought that was when I first saw it, you know, when it first came out, I was like, wow, that's that's a cool album cover. And that's really so, cool. I was, you know, I remember thinking at the time that like I was really into it and I knew the band was really into it. And it was definitely like an aesthetic that I appreciated, but I didn't think anyone I was like, I don't know if people are gonna like understand this, you know, and and you know, flash forward, um, 20 years and thousands of tattoos later and all this stuff and people and people really did understand it and embrace it and they they actually understood what we meant by it and I thought that that was really cool yeah I think the wings were the big deal I think it still would have been cool with just the soldier but I think the wings on the soldier really made it stand out so you have any of your album covers tattooed on you no none of them <laughs> No, I think I'm going to get the pony at, at some point because there's a bunch of people who have it, a lot of the guys in the band and a lot of people surrounding the, the White Pony project for Deftones. So I, I Deftones, think yeah. I'll find a place for the pony would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be kind of cool, I would think. Yeah. Are those guys pretty cool? Obviously, if you've been working with them for 20 years. Yeah. They're you the get coolest, to pick, man. Did, so do you pick who you want to work with at this point? Like any new bands that are coming up? Yeah, I mean, it's, we all have to kind of, you know, I don't want to be the guy who's like, no, I don't want to work on that. But, um, you know, um, I think some things kind of just, it makes sense for certain people to work on. And yeah. there's probably some things that doesn't make sense for me to work on. Um, 
but I try to be really diplomatic. You know, I work in an office with a bunch of other art directors. And so, you know, we can't all be taking like the coolest projects all the time. So sometimes you got to take one for the team. Um, so you know, would you, you know, would you get, have you had to do anything like uh, the hot female pop 40 chick of the moment kind of stuff? Absolutely. And I've had to do yeah. that throughout my career and those things, you know, listen, every, every, facet is fun and you learn from it all you know i've had to do um stuff for kids i've had to do stuff for you know yeah female pop stars i mean listen i would like to do more of that i, I think for some reason i get this you know this rock thing um sometimes and i guess it's just about what you have in your portfolio right if yeah. you've got deftones and lincoln park and green day then you're going to get more of that but i you know i've done work for madonna i've done work for alanis morissette i did two records for alanis um yeah, I love that stuff. So there's, you know, it's did you do the first one as more set? No, I did um Under Rug Swept was my first one I did for her, which I think is her third record. Okay. And that was when I started at Maverick Records, which was two two years after I was at Warner Brothers. Um I left to go to Maverick, um, which was actually the label Deftones were on. Uh when is I started that why you left Deftones, or did you just leave for no, other reasons? I, um, when I was at Warner, De Maverick was kind of like a subsidiary of Warner, like a sister label. Um, yeah. and when I was at Warner, I was already a huge Deftones fan. So when I heard that White Pony was, you know, they're getting ready to release that kind of raised my hand. It was like, I would like to try to work on this, which was odd for a Warner brothers art director to be working on a Maverick project, but the creative director at Maverick at the time, um, agreed to let me do it and, you know, liked my work. So I had that you know, we, we established that relationship. Um, when the creative director at Maverick, who is Kim Biggs, she left Maverick and then Maverick asked me to come over and fill her role. Um, so I went to Maverick for five years uh, as a creative director there. Okay. Yeah. So what, what bands out now are, that would you like to do work with? Are there any like new bands that are coming up or that have just, you know, been out in the last few years that you think are the, that you'd really like to work with and haven't worked with yet? Wow, that's a load. That's such a, that's like. Or have worked with that question. you really like. <laughs> well, so it's funny. Um, that's, I mean, there's tons of bands. I'm still so passionate about music. I'd have to go into my Spotify and kind of listen to, you know, look at what I'm listening to right now and give you some ideas. Um, it's really funny. I've gone back. I just did a, a CD package and a whole imaging for this band called Higher Power. They're out of um, the UK. They're like hardcore, hardcore band. And then working with those guys kind of got me back into the scene a little bit. And I started going to all these shows in LA at the Echo and seeing all these bands play um, that I kind of got out of from. I used to go see bands all the time. And then I got older and everything and kind of wasn't into getting bumped around in the pit anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and it got me passionate about it again. And I started going back and then I started being aware of all these bands and reaching out to them and then like taking photos of them and posting on my Instagram. And then like, you know, there's like a band that has like, you know, 2000 followers on Instagram and I'm reaching out to them going like, dude, I really like you guys. <laughs> like, I want to, I want to work with you or something. And, you know, when the higher power guys, uh, when I worked with them, they were like, you know, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, like, why wouldn't I? Like, you know, they're like, well, you've done Deftones and all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, but that's, that's rad. But like, you guys have, are really cool and let's make some cool art. You know, it's, um, yeah, I would think they'd I guess be flipping maybe, out. Yeah. I guess maybe it's, it's more the like the smaller guys that I'm interested in. Like, sure. Like it'd be great to do some, some stuff for like some of the more heavy hitters, like, you know, even on the pop side, like Post Malone or somebody who's doing really cool artistic stuff. Um, yeah. But some of the like the guys that are on the grind right now are, you know, the smaller bands and stuff like that that are I'm passionate about. Like, you know. Is it what have you seen change as far as album artwork covers since you started in, in two thousand? As far as I mean, with more people just downloading individual songs as opposed to entire albums, is there still the same kind of passion, budget? emphasis on the album cover that there used to be i think it's all you know uh depends on the project like we do a lot more single covers now obviously than we used to probably right because yeah. everybody's releasing singles and so you need an image for that um 
you know, no, we don't have the budgets that we used to have. Um, but you do, you necessarily don't really need the budgets that we used to have in certain ways. Like there's so many ways to be creative. I mean, the iPhone takes such a beautiful photo that like if, if an artist hands me a photo they've shot of themselves, there's a lot we can do to kind of like work creatively with that. So, um, you know, what I always tell people, people always go like, are you worried, you know, about where the industry is going and, you know, uh, there's no more, you know, CDs at Best Buy and all this. But it's for us, it's not about like, the physical piece as much as it used to be but there's always a need for imaging you know an right. artist needs an image online they need their spotify banner they need their album cover they need single covers perhaps there's more uh, need for imaging now more than ever you know with with instagram posts and creative things that people are yeah, doing that's kind of so, what i was wondering if it had gone yeah. to a point where maybe it dropped for a minute and then now you kind of constantly having to produce content because everybody wants to see it constantly you know. It is. I mean, you know, you do a photo shoot with an artist and that and, you know, you've utilized the photos within a few weeks sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and the photo shoot's supposed to last you months. Um, but, but because of, you know, people on Instagram, it's like it's you, you have an image every 10 minutes or something, you know. And so it's like, yeah, there's a constant need for imaging, um, which is good for us, you know, like yourself, like is, it's, you know, we are image makers. So it's a good place yeah. to be in. Um, How much of the photography are you doing yourself? Um, I do quite a bit. Um, you know, I think when, um, I got asked to start shooting some bands, uh, you know, within the last like 10 years. And, um, I think they found that it was a good way to kind of like keep the creative in house, have me shoot some artists. Mm -hmm. Um, it also obviously saved some money and was a good way sometimes to kind of get an artist comfortable with doing photo shoots. Um, a lot of the times those photos go on to be kind of like the photos. So um, I do quite a bit, you know, but there's, but again, there's so many artists and so many different needs. There's photo shoots happening almost every day for our artists, you know, so uh, it's very small on the scale of like our, our roster. But for me, it's a lot. It's probably a quarter of my artists I'm actually working with on photography and stuff. Okay. Uh, do you, did you or have you recently or any time in the past, did you go like on tour with any of these guys and shoot or just hang out with them? Or is it just kind of like you no, went to a I, show I would or two? I love or, to do that. Yeah. yeah, some live stuff here and there. More more so just kind of like what we would do, like with Deftones, we would organize um, trips. Like they weren't a band that would like to go in the studio uh, for a day. They'd say, hey, let's go to New York for the, the week. And let's just kind of like hang around New York and take some photos. And that always worked really well. Um, let's go to New York. Let's go to Joshua Tree and bang out some photos. Let's last time it was, uh, let's go up to Oregon and take some photos in the, in the snow. So they like to arrange kind of like these, um, these experiences and these adventures. Um, so yeah, I always wanted to go on tour with a band, but I think I just got too locked in to life. You yeah, oh, I get so it. It's so cool because that's where you honestly you get so just you get those moments, man. You get those documentary. My favorite, you know, photography is kind of like just these caught moments, you know, documentary style, um, little things that are never going to happen again, you know. And you get that stuff by hanging out with an artist and just shooting all the time. And I love that stuff. Yeah, I enjoy. It. I had when I was younger, I had friends in bands, and I would just hang out with them. And, you know, go up before the show, hang out with them before the shows, and they were all local bands. So I'd just get there ahead of time, shoot, you know, back in the dressing room, backstage, you know, all that, and That's I loved it. it. Yeah, and you know, I had a great time. And then didn't do it for a while. I was out in L.A. for something else, and there was a magazine party or something. They had some musician come in who was popular at the moment. And I went in, they had me shoot that live. And all of a sudden it hit me again. I was like, God, I love taking, you know, shooting bands live and doing all this. But then you know, I would love to go on tour. And then, but, you know, wife, the kids, yeah. the I mortgage know. payment. And then you hear about Annie Leibovitz going out on the road with stones and coming back and having to go to treatment. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's, definitely, there's definitely that aspect of it too, for sure. Yeah, it's probably not. Just um, in the small moments I've spent with some of my bands. I mean, you know, you, it's all about how much you want to put yourself out there. You know, some, some art directors and photographers and, you know, a &R people get really immersed in that lifestyle, you know. And I think that um, if a band embraces you and you become, sometimes you kind of become part of that 
crew for a minute and it's it's those lines get not blurred but it's easy to kind of get absorbed into that lifestyle a little bit um and i think that one of the things that i've always done well is to be able to separate you know kind of like business and pleasure like yes i'm friends with the bands that i work for but in the end i'm here to do a job for them you know what i mean right. like this isn't fun time i'm not like sitting around drinking beers with you guys like um you know, last time I shot Deftones was up in Oregon in like 2017 and they were all having some drinks the night before and I just wouldn't even have a drink because I was so, you know, terrified that I wouldn't be able to do my job the next day. You know, yeah. like I'm like, they're like, come on, have a beer. What's wrong with you, man? What are you doing? I'm like, Dude, I got to <laughs> take photos of you guys tomorrow. Like I can't be like, you know, not feeling even an ounce of not good tomorrow. I need to be on point for you guys. So, you know, it's, you got to kind of do that. Yeah, I yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, I try when we're on shoot some late. I'll maybe at the end of the day, if we don't if we're not shooting the next day, I'll have drinks with the client or what whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I'm with you, man. Because you gotta be ready to go. You screw up and it's screwed up. And that's thousands of dollars or tens of thousands exactly. of dollars to be on the shoot. It's just flush down the you're toilet. Not feeling good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, it's I all, feel you, yeah. It's all on you. So what's the day like for you, man, at work? Like what's a normal day at work for you? Um, so like right now, my normal days, of, well, right now is not normal. Um, right, but yeah. like uh, two months ago, uh, you know, we have these amazing offices downtown now. So, um, you know, commuting to downtown and uh, getting into our office space. And, and to be quite honest, um, I'm all about just getting in and getting my work done. You know, like I'm to the point where like I have a family, I have things I need to, you know, kind of like contribute to at the household and my time away when I'm working, I want to be as creative as I can and as fast as I can and as efficient as I can. I do. I don't do a lot of like, I don't ever go to lunch. <laughs> um, really? I, I'm just the guy who honestly gets into the office still after 20 years of doing this and I just keep my head down and I just do what I got to do to get my work done. Um, I take a walk almost every day and take photos around town and get some inspiration and, you know, see all the weird things happening in downtown LA. Um, and I feel like I'm really more passionate about art and design, everything than I have been, you know, ever. Like I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not, uh, jaded in any way. I'm not tired. Um, I'm like super into it right now. Oh, that's great, man. I mean, be doing this long and still be that into it is very cool. I feel lucky, honestly, like I was trying to explain to my, I feel lucky being able to do what I do. Um, and it's pretty amazing, you know, being able to create art for a living and work with some, you know, amazing bands and artists. Like sometimes I have to go like, wow, they're paying me to do this. That's pretty cool because, you know, I would want to be doing this anyway. If you had to come up with one story that kind of was your favorite time working with a band creating an image or an album cover or whatever it is what would that be man again that's a hard question um i'll keep coming back to deftones only because we've shared some of so many amazing experiences together and and just kind of experiences that are not um they the, it's funny because they approach their music similar i think to the way i approach my artwork whereas we don't always know what the end goal is going to be so when when something beautiful comes out of it at the end it's kind of like really uh amazing and um that isn't answering your question about a specific uh time but um let's see um i actually just told a story the other day but when i was working on um the album for uh for deftones called diamond eyes which is like maybe somewhere in their lineage it's like their fifth or sixth record um it's got the owl on the cover um that was one of those moments where like we had no direction um the album was coming out there was like you know i didn't have you know any direction from the band as to what to do we were in new york shooting some photos um with this kid 13th witness who's like this amazing photographer you know a great trip around town but at the end of it, I was like, okay, I got to present ideas to the band. Um, and uh, I had been working on some things. I think some things I worked on on the plane out to New York from LA. And um, we got together after the photo shoot at the Soho Grand, um, had some drinks, and I brought my laptop down to the bar and presented the guys. Um, 
with the covers and there was kind of this unanimous winner like out of you know five to ten designs that I did everybody really loved that thing with the owl um it kind of really spoke to what the band was going through at the time I think it was another one of those ones where it was like I don't know the meaning of it going into it but in, in the end people really assigned all of this kind of like you know meaning to it, it as like a rebirth of the band um it was the first album with their new bass player after Chi had his horrible accident and so it's kind of like a almost like a phoenix rising from the ashes but it wasn't really like you know wasn't so literal um yeah. so i kind of had this moment where i was like this is amazing we got a cover everyone likes it i'm feeling great we just had a great trip and then it occurred to me that i hadn't um cleared that photo that i used of the owl i hadn't even researched the photo i was just kind <laughs> of like presenting it as an idea of like this is something we could do and they were like no we want that and so I was had this panicked moment when I got back up to my hotel room, like, dude, what am I going to do? Like, the guys love this. Like, you know, I have to see if I can clear this. And luckily enough, I was able to get in touch with the photographer whose image it was. And he worked with us to, for us to be able to clear the, the image. And it was like one of those really extreme highs and then crashing lows were like, oh, my God, I've just, just like, what have I done? You oh, know? yeah, I would think panic set in at that point. <laughs> It's, I mean, you know, it's one of those terrible things where you're like, you feel so good. And then all of a sudden, like, you, how could you go from feeling so elated to feeling so horrible, you know, that quick, but then quickly back to feeling okay, you know, a sigh of relief that we could get it. Um, you know, I've had so many, the first job that I art directed at Warner's was um, with an artist and another art director kind of brought me on board to see how photo shoots go and everything. This is my very first project. and the artist who I won't name because it's not a good experience, but ended up getting into a fight with like the wardrobe stylist, uh, like a literal fist fight. Um, and the manager <laughs> got upset with like the makeup person and the whole, my first photo shoot as an art director, kind of like seeing how things go, just actually just like totally like erupted into chaos and the artist left the set. We had this huge, you know, this crazy location we had paid a lot of money for. It actually came to blows. The like wardrobe stylist was like, I'm gonna sue you guys. <laughs> like it was like, you know, that was my first foray into uh, you know. Okay. Did you book the hair and makeup and the stylist? No, I was just along for the ride. You're just I was there. Just <laughs> for the ride. I was just like like this my art director friend who's Lawrence Azarad kind of took me under his wing. I was like, okay, I'm going to show you how it goes on a photo shoot. I was like, dude, is this how it goes? He's like, this never happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've never had that experience. I've heard of stuff similar to that. I've heard of makeup artists walking out and getting ticked off because of the direction they've been given and they didn't want to do it. And occasionally an artist or a model showing up late or getting a little irritated but not nobody's ever come to blows so that's interesting yeah that that's was a good one crazy yeah, yeah i think you know that. somebody asked me about my favorite album cover the other day that i've done and i don't really have one but um you know the my wife reminded me of the one more light album uh by lincoln park um which was chester's last album with the band um before he passed and you know that was a pretty amazing experience because the cover of that is a photo I took of my kids and some of their friends like oh, in yeah, the surf yeah. on the beach um and that is a really beautiful image to me that I've always loved and and to marry it up with that album and those guys like I it's a nice kind of like it's a nice pairing um and just their response to that image and how that kind of came about was really cool because it was an image I had already shot and I presented to the band as like, an, again, as an idea of something we could seek to achieve. And they held on to that photo so much that they were like, well, why doesn't, why isn't it just this photo, yeah. you know? And um, kind of like everyone in the band felt the same way about it. So, you know, that was special because we've grown up as, as guys, you know, they all have kids now and wives. And so we've come a long way and they understood kind of like the kind of the quiet beauty, I think in that photo. Um, and, it, and that was just a really special moment. Yeah, that's a cool shot. Did you have to pay your kids usage on that? College, college fees. Oh, yeah. that's good. Hey, <laughs> absolutely, man. Take what you can. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Gary Clark Jr., dude. When did you first meet this guy? Oh, man. And Gary's what's he like to work with? Class act. Gary's so cool. He's, you know, just a stellar, obviously a stellar musician, a super cool human being. Um, I worked with Gary uh, when we first signed him, you know, I don't even recall, it was probably, you know, 
pushing 10 years ago, probably that we linked up with Gary. Um, the, I was asked to go to New York to photograph him, get some press photos and everything. And, you know, I kind of just arranged this day where we bummed around New York. I kind of followed him around. We took some, you know, some really fun photos around the streets. Um, when it came time to do the album cover, I wanted, you know, the goal with Gary was never to pigeonhole him as a blues artist because he's so much more than that. Like he brings, you know, obviously elements of rock, but, uh, you know, also hip hop and all these kind of like progressive things. So I think it would have been really easy with Gary to just, you know, kind of put him in that blues lane, you know, put a picture of him with a guitar on the cover and, you know, some distress type, maybe sepia tone, whatever, right, and yeah. have it be that. But we really wanted to kind of like have him be eclectic, which he is. Um, so the, the cover of his first album is a photo that I took that I then kind of like did this watercolor painting of, and then some line work around it and kind of just really wanted to make a captivating image that didn't really allude to any one style, um, of music was kind of like encompassed all of it. Um, and he's just super cool, man. I mean, Gary is so pro and, and I think we've gotten to a really good place where he, um, I mean, he literally has said to me before, just do what you do. You know, and that's oh, a that fun place. Nice. When, yeah. yeah, when you get to a place with an artist, um, again, very challenging because then it's all on you at that point and what you bring to the table. Um, but really nice when somebody has trust in you like that. Yeah, that's huge trust. And it's, I would think on your end, like you said, it's a little challenging, a little stressful, but at the same time, I know for me, if I, you know, when I have a client who goes, this is what we want to shoot, just go do it. It's nice. Cause then you know, you have that freedom and they trust you and that you're going to get it. So that's pretty cool. That's very cool. It man. is really cool. Like the last album we worked on together, I was like, so what do you want to do, man? Like, again, it started off with a photo shoot. I went to his, um, his ranch out in Texas and we just hung out and I was like, all right, cool. So this was really cool. But like in this album for him, this lamb was like super political. Like he had a yeah. lot on his mind and I'm like, so, you know, what do you have in mind? What's it going to be? And he was like, you know, I think Gary understands how to compartmentalize things. He's like, if he doesn't have a specific idea for something, give it to the people that he trusts and that, mm -hmm. that maybe do. Uh, and, and also he's, he's really good at like kind of delegating and, um, you know, I don't have an idea for that, but I'm going to get it off of my plate and you're going to do it. And, and I trust you. And, uh, he literally said, it was like, just, just do what you do, man. You know, oh, yeah, and he's just great, so dude so smooth like that it's like you just want to do a good job for him he's just so cool yeah that's very cool yeah god that must be nice so god what was i going to ask you oh photographers so when you do use outside photographers how do you make that decision is it something that comes from the band and they have somebody they've seen that they like is it somebody that you've seen do you get a ton of promos from dudes and, and went, girls like constantly like, seeing oh, yeah. concert shots and and yeah. how many of those do you actually pay attention to? Because I have art producer friends and creative director friends. And they're like, we get a ton. And they're like, see that right over there? That's all promos. And I Oh, my God. I know, mean, back in know. the day, like when I first started, we had folders and folders and folders of those postcards and promos. And, you know, like I said, probably some of my stuff was in there, too, as an art director. Yeah. I used to send my stuff out. So, you know... Uh, we pay attention to those things. I think the physical things have gotten less, like the mailroom's mm -hmm. not as busy bringing us, you know, that stuff anymore. Um, emails have increased, obviously, though, right? Like, so I'm getting constantly getting emails from people like, check out my work. And, and that's cool. Um, do you have time honestly, to do that? Honestly, the things, I, I try to only because I've been on the other side of it. You know, yeah. like I've been the guy wanting people to look at my work and I still am, you know. Um, so I try to give people, um, I try to pay attention to what I can, you know, sometimes I, you know, an image will come through when I automatically go like, okay, well, that's not appropriate for us clearly. Like right. it's an illustrator or something who's doing, you know, something that's probably not going to fit into Warner records anytime soon. Um, and, and any, you know, at any rate, it's, it's stuff that catches our eye that's different and it's creative. Um, and then we, you know, I'm constantly searching the web for cool photographers, Instagrams, obviously, a, fantastic place um almost too big a place does to the number of followers matter to you guys it it does um sadly because yeah. 
not so much to us as creatives. Like if we saw somebody with a hundred followers and they were doing just stellar stuff, we would back it in a minute, but it's selling the artist and the other team members on that person, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's the same thing as to like, have you shot, who have you shot in your book? You know, mm -hmm. when we present websites and stuff to artists, um, sometimes we have to really trust that they're going to get the artistic side of things if they don't have the big names in their portfolio. And then yeah. sometimes people are just looking at, oh, they shot Kanye, they shot Kim Kardashian, they shot, you know, they're just seeing the people and not even seeing the craft. And that's unfortunate, you know? Um, so it's, but I think now there's so many cool kids doing really cool stuff on Instagram and everything that like people are starting to understand that you, you know, you don't necessarily have to have done all these big, um, big names or have a million followers to do something cool for an artist, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard, I have friends who complain about the, about having to have the followers and on Instagram and that's all anybody cares about. And then I, have, and then I know people who, They'll tell me I have a really good friend who's an art producer and she says, yeah, it's an, for some, unfortunately it's an issue. And then I have others who are like, yeah, we don't care. We don't even look to see. We just, you know, present whoever and we're not, we're not worried about it. So I think it just it varies, seems to be kind of all over the place, but I do get the sense that if it comes down to two people who are very similar and you're just trying to decide between the two and one has a hundred followers and one has you know half a million you're going with the person who has half a million followers obviously because it's going to be yeah more free you know publicity. at that point it comes down to logistics and budget and all that too but i, I will yeah. tell you like the instagram thing has created this whole other kind of world um where like you can be doing really cool stuff on instagram but like perhaps if we give you an artist to work with and the parameters that we need to work within you know, you have to still be able to bring that same level of creativity to something that has like these boundaries, you know, like we, or know how to, you know, there's a lot of people doing stuff that are just making really cool stuff, but like, do they know how to go into the studio all day and like properly light something um, and, you know, get the artist to look how they want them to look and hire the makeup people and, mm -hmm. and bring in the proper insurance. There's a lot more levels to like doing what you guys do um, than just putting, cool shit up on Instagram. Yeah, actually I had a friend tell me that exact same thing. She said, my, my company wants me to hire these Instagram people. And some of them, what they do for Instagram is great because they just do it for them and they do what they want to do. But when you bring them in here and you go, hey, this is how you have to do this, they freak out and they don't know how to do it. And then there are others yeah. who are just like, oh, no problem, they got it because that's they're used to it. But yeah, there's some, which I've always been say yes and figure it out. You know, you say, you say yeah. yes, and then you figure it out before you get there. You test it. You do everything you can. So when you show up on set, you can give them what you already said you could give them. But um, I'm getting the feeling that maybe some of them say yes, and then they don't. <laughs> they don't. It all depends, you know. Uh, it's, if I'm going to somebody on Instagram because I like their aesthetic, whether it's really film-oriented or lo-fi or something, and I want them to do that, then that's, that's cool. You know, you should never approach somebody wanting them to do something different. But, you know, um, it's just the, the, the it's, it went from being like a photography and art direction and everything went from being like having these boundaries to now it's just huge. Oh, yeah. And there's so many people making so many things and that's really exciting. Um, you know, some of the artists that are working with uh, smaller people on Instagram and all these creative, they're banging out some really cool stuff and it's, it's fun to see. Yeah, I agree. It's been, it's been interesting since I actually got on there and, and you can see all these different people. And it's an inspiration for me. Because I'm, I don't too, have a yeah. team that's around me, so it's nice to be able to see that stuff and you get inspired by, oh, that's cool. I want to go do that. You know, do something similar. Hundred percent. Get you out yeah. there. So yeah, yeah. And then quite honestly, just seeing the stuff you've been posting lately, I guess from you just walking around doing your walks every day, dude. Every time I see that, I was like, God, I live in the suburbs, so I was like, well, I'm going <laughs> to shoot somebody's mailbox in their house. So I look at your stuff and just think, God, all right, that would be cool. I need to go down into the city and, and, and shoot some stuff. And even if it's nothing with my iPhone, I was sitting here in my office looking, I have one, I have like five pictures framed hanging on the wall. And I just realized that three out of the five I shot with my iPhone. Yeah. And 
you know, then I took them into Photoshop and tweaked them and played with them. Right. But still, I mean, I blew them up to 11 by 14s and then framed them and shot it with my iPhone and they look great. It's a powerful tool, man. I take a run every day and, you know, don't take a camera with me, but I take the iPhone and I just, you know, stop and shoot things. And it's an amazing tool. You know? Yeah, it's great to have that right there with you all the time now. Although I, it, it really is. It, it irritates my uh, wife and my kids some because we're I'm, I'm constantly, if I, especially with this quarantine thing, I've had my camera out and I'm shooting. And then if I don't have it with me and I see something I like, I'll pull up my phone and my, especially my youngest daughter, she's constantly going, stop, just quit taking my picture all the time. I hear you, man. My son won't even come near me anymore because I'm just constantly shooting him. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I mean, last, last question, what is the most unusual or interesting thing that's happened to you since you've been in this business? Besides getting fired from the, <laughs> no, um, besides the, the, the artist walking off the set on my first photo shoot, um, yeah. the most interesting thing, I don't, I don't know per se, like there's, you know, it's been 20 years. It's been a lot of different artists. It's been a lot of different experiences. I, I think getting to kind of be behind the scenes with artists and see how they're doing things, have them trust you to kind of come into their world, uh, whether it's when they're making music or when they're at a vulnerable stage of, you know, not knowing where things are going. Um, I, it, again, it kind of loops back to me being, not being a musician, but being really interested in music. I get to kind of live vicariously through them at times. And so, um, it, there isn't really any one, like, there probably is a few things that like, you know, are crazy experiences, but I think it's just the overall scope of understanding how things get made, um, working with artists and then seeing like how things evolve from there, you know, seeing, you know, having someone use the words iconic with my images is like, that's, that's an amazing thing to be a part of. And so from creation to, you know, to the end of it, um, being responsible for that process is just, it's pretty unbelievable. And like I said, sometimes it's just, you know, it's kind of unreal. Dude, you do have a very, very cool job. I have to say. Um, I know yeah. it's crazy, man. Sometimes I, I honestly do. I'm like, really? <laughs> like you're paying me? Yeah, that's always nice when you have that kind of thing going on where you can do what you love to do and you get paid for it. And yeah, you did your, like I said, you got a very cool gig, man. Um, it's cool, man. Well, it's like, it's like, it goes back to me being so passionate about it. It's like, there's a, tons of people who would want to be doing what I'm doing right now. And I'm not about to like, you know, let, let the, the foot off the gas, you know, in fact, I'm only, you know, speeding it up right now and trying to be more relevant and trying to stay on top of things. And, you know, more inspired than ever so i'm not slowing down well that's a good thing yeah because a lot of people would probably be the opposite of that so that's a really good thing well dude thank you for doing this um i really appreciate, appreciate anybody you. anybody watching listening be sure and like it share it thumbs up it subscribe to it all that kind of stuff and uh we'll talk to y'all later thank you dude thank you very much um yeah i appreciate dude. you man thank you yeah, I really um, appreciate you agreeing to do it, dude. It was it was very cool of you. And and uh, when this is over, and I start traveling yep. again, get out to LA. Maybe I'll hit you up when we grab lunch or a drink yep. or something like that. And uh, come on out, come on out happening. to the office, and we'll do some social distancing lunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can I can see where you work. All right, dude. Yeah, man. Well, thank it's, you very it's much. Fun. I appreciate you, Mark. Thanks so much for reaching yeah. out and send me the link when you got it. Absolutely, Frank. I'll do it. Thank you. All right, thanks, man. Talk to you later.